Perhaps I should explain my part in this film. I was the officer who was given the task of compiling a war study on Operation Goodwood. And to conclude the war study, I've asked four of those who took part to comment on certain aspects of the plans, the forces, the battle and its aftermath in the hope that the lessons that they learnt at such cost will help us in our preparations for the future. General Roberts, it would seem that before Operation Goodwood, you were badly misled by our own intelligence estimates, in spite of our air superiority. Was this so? Uh, yes, it certainly, it certainly was so. We did not know, and I'm quite sure that neither 2nd Army or 21 Army Group knew the real extent of the uh, German defences. And of course it's not surprising because uh, not long, only a, a few days before this particular battle, uh, Rommel had made uh, particular efforts to increase the opposition in this particular part of the front because he felt himself, apparently, so we le now learn, that it was a very dangerous place and uh, one which is, of course, as we know ourselves only too well, was the, perhaps the, the uh, had the best scope for armoured manoeuvre and of course it was a, a hinge to the whole of the German defence in, in the in the West. Colonel von Luck, you and General von Rosen both agree that your tank reserves were sighted too far forward. Where would you have liked to have sighted them? I would say uh, when we had to decide where to put our heavy tank battalion and the other battalion it should have been in the area of Freneville in southeast of Freneville to be able to counterattack direction north, west, or west of both sides of Kandy. If our intelligence estimates have been correct, do you think the plan would have been materially altered, General? Well, I don't think the, the basic plan would have been altered, possibly parts of it. But the basic plan wouldn't have been altered, in my mind, because we, uh, that I say, 2nd Army or 21 Army Group, had a greater proportion of armour than they really required. They wanted more infantry, but for various reasons that I don't think I need to go into, the uh, infantry was not available. And uh, we had more tanks that we could really employ in this comparatively limited bridgehead. So, uh, Dempsey, that is one of the reasons that Dempsey and he suggested this operation right at the outset, suggested that he should use the three armed divisions he had in a, an operation uh, of this type. Of course, you had massive pre-planned air support. Was there any other air support available to you? Oh, yes, there was. There was to be established, in fact, there was established, what we then called a cab rank of typhoons, a squadron uh, sitting above us all the time, which was uh, to be directed by uh, um, a thing we call uh, an FCP, a forward control post. This was a cut-down Marmon Harrington Harmon car with in it an RAF officer to talk to the typhoons and a signals officer to keep the uh, wireless sets going. And uh, the, um, while the uh, uh, RAF officer would guide the Typhoon directly onto the target by talking to the pilots as they were sitting on the air. Unfortunately, a direct hit on it knocked the whole thing out, so that the typhoons were not given anything like the direction they should have been through the rest of the day. And the only way of controlling them then was by firing pink smoke onto targets and then through means of the communication to, to division corps and then to the uh, RAF, a time program was put, down, put on as to when the, the pink smoke should have been fired. And so the target was indicated to the air. Uh, it must have been fairly effective because we had, uh, the Canadians had an intercept of one of the Panzer divisions involved in the fighting in about the middle of the day, the afternoon, and uh, they said we find difficulty in uh, maneuvering and, and moving because of the, uh, the threat of the air attack. Colonel von Luck, don't you think mines would have been useful to you in Operation Goodwood? I would say no, because uh, following our mobile defense tactics, mines would have hindered us from counterattacks. Oh, what do you think about General uh, Well, I can't help feeling that although it might have 
in the early days when uh, you were in this uh, bridgehead here, you didn't want them, but come the uh, time of this battle, your counter-attacking was uh, getting rather more limited, and had you had some uh, mines in the back, uh, this rather uh, rather open area, it could have been a great confusion to us, not say that about it. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, but it would uh, be confusion for us as well. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, until uh, Goodwood, we always hoped to, uh, by counter-text, to got, get into the bridgehead. Yes. And so we didn't use any mines. General, you remonstrated with the corps commander about the task given to your infantry brigade of clearing Couverville and Demoville. With hindsight, do you think his decision altered the course of the battle? To fight a battle with hindsight is always very easy. But I think in this instance, now that we know what both sides of the hill were like, it is quite interesting to consider what could have taken place if that infantry brigade had not been diverted onto those particular tasks. For all, to begin with, there would have been available to me not only the infantry brigade, but one additional armoured regiment of the form of the Northamptonshire Yeomanry and one additional field regiment normally supporting the infantry brigade. Now, uh, if he'd also said the corps commander had absolved me from taking those two villages and said at the same time, well, if you're not taking those, you must take Kenya because that's more or less on your route and we will, it will be affected by the bombardment and you'll go straight in. Well, what would have happened? I reckon that, as you've heard from Colonel von Luck, he saw the 40 tanks of the Fashion 4 Fire Yeomanry south of Kanye, but this time they would have driven straight into the village with a motor company straight behind them, and I think they may have found, may have found him in his Paris clothes, and the 488s in Kanye pointing up to the air with no determination to shoot any tank on the ground. Now, Following up behind would have been the infantry brigade and the battalion could have been into Kanye very quickly. Uh, and I understand from, from uh, Carl von Lupp that at that particular time, southeast of Kanye, southeast of, uh, of Kanye, down here, there was practically nothing else. Am I uh, right on that? No, but nothing else. Practically nothing else. No. Therefore, uh, an opening would have been provided at once, and I, we would have had armored cars. They were they were trying to get forward all the time, finding it very difficult. They were undoubtedly have been able to penetrate down here, and uh, the five and four fire yeomanry could have made a a, a left hand swing up towards Brokebus, and we had a fourth armored regiment, not a moment to, uh, at present available, which could have come up the centre here without having to look after this area of Sanaville. Well, that's how I see the situation uh, as it might have developed. Would you think, Hans, that that is a reasonable possibility, in fact, perhaps even a probability of what would have occurred if we had operated in that manner? I think it uh, would easily be possible because at that time, in the uh, early morning of uh, 18th, uh, there were no reserves at all. The first elements of first SS came down here at late afternoon of 18th, and the 12th SS came only on the scene on the 19th. So as a result of your experiences at Goodwood, did you feel the need to reorganize your brigades in any way? Well, uh, not exactly because of the experience at Goodwood. Our next operation was to be around uh, Comor, which was in the very close Bocard country. And there you want the very closest cooperation between armour and infantry, in fact, on a two platoon basis. Now, it was for that reason, that before the next operation, we trained uh, on that type of uh, tactical handling of the two brigades being... Um, uh, composed of two armed regiments and two infantry battalions. But actually, during Goodwood, I don't know that I would have cared to operate in that way. You m it must be appreciated, in those days, the infantry brigade were carried in three-ton lorries with no protection whatsoever. 
And I don't think uh, on here you could have had them uh, trundling along in uh, three-ton lorries in this very open country. And therefore, I think it would be sounder to have kept them as a brigade to follow up the armour and not, in the first instance, operate so very closely to them. Colonel von Luck, how did Goodwood affect the morale and training of your troops? Uh, before Goodwood, our losses were not, were not very high. And we got uh, reinforcements by a young man, well trained in our own training camp in Germany. But after Goodwood, after the loss of the 1st Battalion, we got reinforcements, especially by the 16th Luftwaffenfeld Division, at which we had to integrate and train. The morale before Goodwood was very high. We had very well experienced officers and non-commissioned officers at that time who were aware of the importance of this battlefield. After Goodwood, the morale changed, as I think, because then all of us, we thought we had to fight for our own families and country and not any more for any high ideas. General, how do you think Goodwood affected the 11th Armour Division? The 11th Armour Division was very well trained in England, not by me. Um, it was very well trained and uh, had had no battle experience until it came to Normandy. Uh, as a result, Goodwood, although we had a great many casualties, did not really affect its morale at all. And the next battle we fought at Kilmore was highly successful. But take the whole of the campaign when um, many more casualties were received and a lot more experience was gained, uh, a lot more difficult situations been dealt with, then the atmosphere was changed. And I, my view is that at the end of the campaign, by the time we got to the Baltic, I think it required a good year of training in quiet circumstances to bring it back to the standard it was before. Uh, you will recollect that uh, Bill Close, in order to get his uh, squadron uh, under the bridge going through the embankment on the railway line, he had to take off his hat, wave it in the air, and say, follow me. Now, I don't believe that would have happened in either of the other three regiments in the division. The fact is that with a great deal of fighting, all concerned become a little more wary and a little more canny. It's more difficult to get people to go round the corner uh, after that sort of experience than it is right at the outset of a campaign. Colonel, Major Becker in his diaries maintains that if the British had used smoke to screen the flanks of their advance, his effectiveness would have been greatly diminished. Do you agree with that? Uh, I fully agree, uh, especially when the 11th Armed Division would have been used smoke to mask these villages on their left flank beginning with Le Prieur, Le Menil Fonantel, Cagny, Le Poirier, and Fort. The next day, the 11th Division used smoke with great success on Bra and Hubert Foley. I think, General Roberts, that probably smoke could be provided for this attack if needed. I agree with you. I think it would have been very helpful, but of course it would have been at the expense of H.E and a great uh, deal of uh, con a great number of concentrations of HE fire were being put down all over the front. May I specify, uh, specify my question? Yes. Could smoke be shut on Kanye if you wanted to do this? Uh, I would say, yeah, it certainly could have done with some of the 25 pound regiments uh, which uh, were there. It could have been done, but for how long I'm afraid I couldn't say. I suppose it depends on the direction of the wind and the strength of the wind, how much smoke you require, and for how long. It could, it could have been done, but I feel to smoke all the villages that you're talking about would have needed a reallocation of the proportion of smoke to shell. Yeah. 
One final question, General. 